What's up guys? It's Ben from Theme Park Groupie. I am finally in Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This is my first ever trip, so I am super stoked. There's a list of things that I have that I want to ride, mainly all coasters, so the shows and all that other stuff. We'll have to wait until I can make sure I can ride everything because I have a short trip. Let's get started. Let's talk about what's new and exciting here at Busch Gardens. Busch Gardens Williamsburg has recently introduced two exhilarating roller coasters that has everyone buzzing. The first coaster is Pantheon, a record-breaking multi-launch coaster that will leave you breathless. The second and most recent one is Dark Coaster, an indoor coaster that promises a spine-tingling experience. All right, let's get this tour started. We're here in the England section of the park where you can immerse yourself in the charm of old world Europe. The park is now open, so let's go check out Dark Coaster Escape the Storm. So everybody is rushing to Dark Coaster. There's two ways to go. The map told me to go left, so I started going left, and then it got stopped by a train. Literally, the path gets blocked by the train. So everybody's going back the other way. The queue line is beautifully themed and you can feel the excitement building as you wait to board the ride. This coaster takes you on a thrilling journey through the darkness with unexpected twists and turns. Hang on tight because things are about to get intense. God, I literally just got off of Dark Coaster. What an awesome attraction. I am a huge indoor ride fan, indoor coasters. That's why The Mummy is one of my favorite rides of all time. I love coasters and I love it being indoors. You're just blasting through these launches and the air is just blowing in your face. It's like a real intense space mountain. Literally, you have no idea where you're going most of the time, but it is super thrilling. Now I am coming in completely blind to Busch Gardens Williamsburg. I've watched very little to try to save as much suspense as possible. Ver Bolton was actually insane. I literally didn't know what to expect. There's so many aspects. If you've written it, you know what all the aspects I'm referring to, but there's literally so many things to it. Ah. So again, I'm coming in completely blind. I am finding out that it's all separated with countries, which is really cool. It's kind of like a mix between Epcot and Busch Gardens Tampa. It's a really cool aspect to it, and then it gives really good theming for each ride. Now let's make our way to Alpengeist, a thrilling inverted coaster that will have you hanging on for dear life. This coaster takes you through twists, turns, and inversions high above the park. It's a true adrenaline rush. Now, if you've been to Busch Gardens Tampa, you might notice that this ride bears a striking resemblance to Montu. Both coasters are inverted and provides an intense and exhilarating ride experience. This one takes you on a wild journey through the snow-covered Alps while Montu plunges you into the mysteries of ancient Egypt. So if you love Montu, you're in for a treat. Now for the wooden coaster invader. The entrance facade was really cool. I did like it a lot. And I'm a huge fan of wooden coasters. Not a lot of people are, but I actually really enjoy them and I think they're awesome. I 
love wooden coasters. I think they're awesome. The shakiness, it really doesn't do anything to me. I, I can I totally understand that I might give someone some nausea or something. There's difference between a shaky steel coaster and a shaky wooden coaster. To me, I find wooden coasters to be super thrilling and so much fun. The Busch Gardens Railway is a charming train ride that takes you on a leisurely journey through the park. It's a great way to relax, enjoy the beautiful scenery, and save your feet by taking you to different areas of the park. Who can forget Loch Ness Monster, a legendary coaster that has been thrilling guests since 1978. With its iconic interlocking loops, this coaster is a true piece of history. You can tell that one has some miles on it. It's a little rocky, but honestly, it was really fun and totally worth it because I came on a Tuesday and the line was basically nothing, but it was a really fun ride. I can definitely tell Busch Gardens Williamsburg, a lot of the rides like to take you indoors, and I love that, especially as a Floridian. I wish Busch Gardens Tampa had more rides that took you inside. I'm all about going indoors with your coasters. If you're in the mood for a more relaxed experience, take a scenic cruise along the Rhine River. On the Rhine River Cruise, it's a peaceful and beautiful way to enjoy the park from a different perspective. As we continue our adventure through Busch Gardens Williamsburg, I'm seeing more and more options for the little ones. I was going to try out Grover's Alpine Express, a family coaster, but unfortunately it seems like my timing wasn't on point today as Grover's Alpine Express was temporarily closed for maintenance. After the recent incident at Carowinds Fury 325, I am more than happy to wait for inspections and maintenance to be completed. Now let's make our way to Pantheon, the park's record-breaking roller coaster. This coaster boasts four power powerful launches and reaches speed up to 73 miles per hour. It's a true adrenaline rush from start to finish. I can't wait to show you this incredible coaster in action. Hold on tight because we're about to experience the thrill of Pantheon. That was insane! Pantheon is an absolute beast of a coaster. The launches are incredibly powerful and the twists and inversions are mind-blowing. It's definitely one of the most thrilling coasters at the park it seems. Here we have a closed Tempesto, a unique style coaster that shares similarities with Tigris at Busch Gardens Tampa. Both coasters are compact and packed with inversions and launches, delivering on intensity and compact experience. So if you're a fan of Tigris, be sure to give Tempesto a spin, if it's open that is. Next up we have Apollo's Chariot, a classic hyper coaster that delivers incredible airtime. This coaster glides gracefully over hills and drops, giving you a feeling of weightlessness. It's definitely a fan favorite. Apollo's Chariot was awesome. It did give me strong Mako vibes from SeaWorld in Orlando. 73 miles per hour. You're literally just cruising. You're like, ah, so fast and so much air time. That was one of my favorites so far. So I've completed pretty much everything on my list so far as far as coasters goes besides Griffin. I'm gonna take a break from the coasters and check out all the water rides. 
Now let's cool off with Escape from Pompeii, a water ride that plunges you into the heart of volcano eruption. Get ready to get wet. I decided to give Marco Polo's Marketplace a shot. This eatery offers a wide variety of delectable foods to choose from, ensuring there's something for everyone. I opted for the chicken parmesan. The portion size was generous and I must say I devoured every last bite. It was simply delicious. What made my dining experience even more enjoyable was the fantastic live music playing in the background. The talented musicians set the perfect ambiance. However, I must mention that there was a strange surcharge added to my meal, which the cashier explained was due to rising costs in the park. I mean, just raise the price of the meals. Kinda odd. Now that we've recharged our energy, let's continue our exploration of Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Let's not forget about the classic rides here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Le Scoot is a traditional log flume ride that will have you splashing down into the water with a big smile on your face. like that one. Typically what strays me away from the water rides is because I don't want to be absolutely soaked all day while walking around, but that one you barely get wet. I'm sure it can change. I only had one person in the car, it was me. So if you had a ton more people, the splashes might be more. So you may or may not get more wet than I did, but if you just want a little sprinkle, that was a good one. So what I'm gathering is that with literally just one day visit, seems like you will most likely be able to grab and ride pretty much everything on your list. I've only been here for about five and a half hours, and I've done basically all but one or two rides that I wanted to do. So literally, without even the quick cue, it's in the middle of the summer, but it is a Tuesday. I've heard Tuesdays and Wednesdays are a lot slower, but I've done pretty much everything. Moving on, let's talk about Griffin, a dive coaster that's reminiscent of its counterpart Shikra at Busch Gardens Tampa. Griffin and Shikra share the same jaw-dropping 90 degree drops and provide that incredible sensation of hanging on the edge before taking the plunge. If you've conquered Shikra, you definitely won't want to miss Griffin. So the last 45 minutes has been kind of a bust. I went to go ride Dark Coaster for the third time, so again, I'm getting greedy, but it went down. So I go all the way over to ride Griffin because I haven't done that one yet. And there's a storm approaching and that one's down. So I'm like, okay, I got one more water ride left. Roman Rapids. So I, I truck all the way from one side of the park to the other, the ride's down. So I'm not having great luck. I'm gonna see if Griffin is back open yet. Cause I don't see any more storm clouds. We'll see. Finnegan's Flyer is a thrilling swing ride that will have you soaring through the air at incredible heights. I recently tried Busch Gardens Tampa's version Serengeti Flyer. Check out the full POV here. Literally the only thing I'm not so crazy about is the map, the layout. It's kind of confusing and I've gotten lost a couple of times. Haven't lost a ton of time when I do it. Um, it's easily corrected, but you just have to stay pretty close to your app on the app they have the full map and you can put your location in it so you know where you are at all times. Ah, so Griffin is still down due to inclement weather even though it's beautiful outside. Such a bummer. I It was my own fault. I pushed it off until the end of the day. I wanted it to be my last thing I did and it wasn't even the last thing. I didn't even get to do it. 
I'm trying not to let it bum me out though because I really have had such a great day. I got so much done. I really am so grateful I was able to come and experience what I got to experience. Just know this stuff is very high tech and it takes a lot to keep running. So you do run into the possibility of it going down temporarily during your visit. I am super grateful and I definitely plan on posting more from all the content that I got today at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. So make sure you're subscribed and you click that bell so you don't miss anything. If you did like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And thanks for watching Theme Park Griffith.